Well, we finally found our leak. It's on one of these art cool units. That's the way it normally looks, where it says Shore United Bank. This is an air conditioner for anybody who hasn't seen one before. This is a ductless unit, and it's part of the VRF system. But our leak is here. So. All right, guys, we're pulling the refrigerant out of this LG VRF system here. This is a four ton one. We actually have three of them up here. They're a single phase VRF that services a bank. Now we weren't sure how low this was on charge. We knew it was low though. So we're pulling the charge out of it. We've got it almost all the way down now. And it's supposed to have, I believe 18 pounds in it. We've almost pulled out almost 12. So we know it's gonna be at least six pounds short. So we're gonna see how low it is and then get a, um, we did electronically leak search everything, all three of these yesterday, cause all three are low. Really didn't find anything. There's a bunch of different equipment. There's several different branch boxes, um, uh, wall cassettes, uh, air handlers, uh, LG art cool units. There are a lot of them. So we did electronically leak search everything yesterday. And on this unit here, we found a leak on this fusible plug here. Now this is apparently a warranty issue through LG. There, there's a service bulletin on this leaking. So LG is gonna offer us compensation for our time in refrigerant to repair this. It's actually leaking right out the top of this plug here. So the job of this is if the refrigerant uh, temperature or pressure ever gets too high, it will blow the refrigerant um, and not tear up anything else. And this one, we really haven't got a whole lot of uh, chance to do anything with this guy yet. Yeah, this is a three ton unit that has one branch box and uh, six separate heads. Um, but we're gonna pull the charge out of that one also to see how low it is. So we got all that going on today. We're not gonna do anything with this guy today because we already found the leak on this. We're waiting on this fusible plug to come in and then we'll concentrate on this one. This one is a five ton unit. This is the largest one here. But this guy's almost empty here. Like I said, I know we're at least six pounds short. We just haven't been able to find the leak on it yet. So we're gonna pump her up with as much nitro as we can and let her let her sit for a while. Yeah, see the, our, our accumulator's icing up. We got a little ways to go, but I know we don't got six pounds left, that's for sure. We have this unit in vacuum mode. And you do that by um, dip switch five up, and then there's other settings you get too. And what that does is all the, the valves and EEVs in the system, it forces open. That way, Every valve and every all the piping is open so you can pull a vacuum or recover the refrigerant. So that's what it's doing now. So we're, we don't have to worry about if one or two valves are closed or open or halfway open. It just forces them all open to 100%. That way we can pull our vacuum or recover. We're going to let this pull for a little while longer. Then we're going to pump, pump her up with nitro. We'll go from there. Those art cool units downstairs, we really didn't get a good chance to leak search the flare fittings on them because they're behind the wall. We couldn't get to them. So there is, I believe, two on this system here. Those are the only two we weren't able to leak search properly. So I'm not sure if those are leaking or not. If anything, that's probably where they're leaking at because everything else checked out. So... Yeah, this will probably take a few, a few more minutes to pull that last little bit out. All right, we're putting nitro in it now. We're going to get it up as high as we can. 
Uh, 500 is standard for VRF. Um, actually, it's really 600, but we'll see what it what I can get out of this tank here. I'll probably have to go get some more nitrogen, but I took about 14 pounds out of it of its 18, so I know it's four pounds short, um, which is about, I don't know, 24, 25% of its charge that it lost. So we know it's low. It's not that low. I don't think it's as low as we thought it was, but it is low. I would really love to find a leak on this thing, but it's pretty minuscule if it lost four pounds. Well, I mean, not that minuscule, but <clears throat> like I said, it's just not as much as I thought it was. So. Yeah, I'm going to end up having to go get some go get some nitro <clears throat> well we finally found our leak it's on one of these art cool units that's the way it normally looks where it says shore united bank this is a air conditioner for anybody who hasn't seen one before this is a ductless unit and it's part of the vrf system but our leak is here so I couldn't figure out how to get these apart yesterday. So now that I know how to get it apart, I uh, we took it off and here it is. So I can probably shut the ball valves just for this system so I don't have to lose all my nitrogen because I have over 500 pounds of nitrogen on it right now. So that way I can take that and I can repair this Matter of fact, I'm gonna try just tightening it up. Maybe it's just loose. All right, we're cutting this. I tried tightening it up, it didn't work. So we're cutting just the flare off. And I don't know how many of you guys know this, but um, most tubing cutters have this groove here for just cutting flare heads off so you don't have to cut off any more than you have to. So basically, yeah, your little, um, your, just your flare head goes into that groove there and you're only cutting off, say, a eighth inch of piping there. Um, that way, you know, you're not cutting off many more than you have to. So yep, that's what that little groove there is for. So we're going to finish cutting this guy off here. Uh, we're going to ream the pipe and then we're going to reflare it. The thing is, this the flare that was it fell off. Let's take a look at this. See, this flare doesn't even look that bad, but when you're talking over 500 psi refrigerant pressure, this thing better be right. It does feel like it has a little, yeah, see, right. Right there, it looks a little boogered. So, yeah, I can feel it. It's a little boogered right there. And we'll check, uh, we'll check here too, make sure all our threads are good. And we're good there, so. It feels okay. I got our flare not here too. Make sure everything's good there. Honestly, all that seems okay. Might have just been that little jagged piece there. All right, we fixed that flare down there. Kenny's uh, re arm flexing it and taping it and all i'm raising this back up to 550 so we can make sure nothing else is leaking pretty sure that was our leak though our one and only because i already been over everything else on here all right we got her on 554 now we'll watch it for a few minutes make sure it's good i think it is though because before it was dropping pretty steadily but now seems like it's stabilized 
So I'll blow this and I got to pull a vacuum on her. All right, I'm blowing my nitro. It's almost all the way gone. I'm not going to blow it down to zero though. I'm going to blow it probably about down to five because I don't want to put any negative pressure or introduce any uh, moisture into this system. So we're going to pull it down maybe to five or so. Then I'm going to hook my vacuum up and then we'll let my vacuum pump pump the rest of that out. All right, guys, pulling our vacuum now. Looks like I might need new batteries in my Micron gauge. I haven't used this one in a while, but that's what we're down to right now. We got our, our gas ballast open. We're gonna let her pull for a while. <clears throat> this vacuum's probably gonna take me a while, guys. We have uh, two branch boxes and six indoor units. That is two of those arc cool units and four air handlers so i got a and a lot of line sets so we got a lot to pull all right i'm keeping on with my vacuum here i'm down to about 1874 but i don't know if anybody else can help me out i've had this pump for a, a while now it's the 8 cfm uh field piece I found that if I plug this into a GFI protected outlet, it trips the GFCI. It doesn't do it every time, but most of the time when I have it plugged in to a GFI uh, protected outlet like this one, it will trip that GFI. All right, guys, we're charging her back up now. It's getting pretty cold and windy up here. So we're trying to hurry up and get done. It's getting late in the afternoon. I'm gonna put the 14 pounds I took out of it back in and then we're gonna to top it off with with fresh so that's what we're doing now and I'm gonna reset it I'm still in vacuum mode here so we'll get it reset just put in what we can all right guys I got 12 pounds out of the recovery tank that we pulled out of it I really pulled 14 out of it but I only used 12 of it um, so I wasn't putting a bunch of vapor in it or anything so now we're uh, we're adding in from our fresh drum. We're gonna put about six pounds in it. This uh, this unit held uh, 0.02 ounces under 18 pounds. So uh, we're just gonna put 18 in it and call it a day. So um, that's close enough to 18. So we've got a couple more pounds to go here. All right, just like that, she's back to running 100%, guys. So we're good to go here. Backing up now. Man, we're freezing our asses off now. Water coming off that ocean is cold today.